Now let's do a tad out on this SDS 814X HD. We get permission to pull this thing apart by the owner so I can show you what's inside. I've got my tools here ready to go so now we can get into it and uh, we should be good. So the first thing we've got to do is get these annoying BNC jacks off. Okay, yeah, I'm joking. Let's do this properly. I need a hammer. So I've got my iFixit bit set here out. We've got two screws here which you have to take out. Obviously you don't leave them in now as it doesn't work. That's the whole point of taking it apart. I've got two more screws here and we have a seal. Can I break this seal and get into it without destroying it? Maybe. We'll find out. So I think before I take these two screws out I'm going to break the seal here. That way it won't accidentally get torn or something. So let's try this today. You don't want scratches on it do you Rob? So now let's do it like this. Oh wait no, that's wrong. Let's see if we can get into it here eh? We may or may not be able to do it. Depends how good the adhesive is. If I slip, I slip. Hmm, no. This is... Oh... Rob, we might lose the seal. This seal is not as forgiving as the other ones. I have an idea. We'll try that, let that soak in a bit. Well, that worked. Managed to lift that end up. I'm going to do now is put some tape on this to fold it over like that and get it out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. Whilst I carry on with the uh, tear down. Once the case is out of the way, it should be fine. Right, is that done? Now let's get the screws out. Magnet. Always handy to have magnets. Let's try lifting this off. I think it's just a clip because it's sticking on the top half of the case here. So there's probably some clips along the top of the case. Got a plastic spudger. There we go. There she is. Solid metal casing. Let's get these other screws out of this metal chassis here so we can take this back plane off. I imagine the power supply is all attached to this. There's some studs in here I can see, so chances are once I get these screws out, this will just come off. So we'll do that. I think I'll take this nut off here too. Get this nut off. Conveniently, I actually have these here. I knew they'd come in useful. A bit more. I'll probably have the right spanner here somewhere for it, but you know. I did make a joke about using these, so I should really use them. I'm not sure about the wire cutters yet though. Yep, it wants to go. Right, what's in here? Fold it over this way. So we've got this motorway connector and a fan connector. Pull this off first. Right, there's the power supply. Looks like it might be multi output. That's interesting. And there's the inside. Let's get a closer shot of this and have a close look at the inside. Right, here's a nice close video shot. I should probably do some photos of this as well, put them on the EV blog forum. So that's what's there. So that's where the power supply was. We've got a button here, some headers along here, unpopulated ones and populated. This is obviously power supply section over here. Obviously the channel connections. So the channels also come up into each of these. The ADCs. Main process will be under here. Got some RAM. We've got another little device there. I'm not quite sure what that is. Screen cable. Buzzer. So we've got this heat sink here, which looks like it can actually be removed. Actually, these aren't test points here. It'll just occur to me. We've got them over here too. These are used for tie down with a heat sink. So I said these test points, which are test point loops, but obviously that's used for one of these, but they don't have them installed on here. They're purely adhesive. These aren't coming off in a hurry. I'm not going to try. Except for a retaining clip like this one's got on it. Not keen to take that off. I could try. Find out what's underneath it. Nah, there's a good chance Dave will do a tear down on this as well and look at more detail. I'm not really into the actual process of stuff, more of yeah, the architecture. But it's still a quick look around, all right? Just look at basic thing. USB ports, USB drivers, Ethernet port, Ethernet stuff, power supplies, more power supplies, 
some of these are actually marked, they've also got some diodes down here which aren't populated. I did see a marking up here, there's some voltages here, look, 1V2 is marked there, something is that 3 amp, 6V5, there's a few voltages marked on the board which is nice. The actual socket doesn't say exactly what the voltages are, unless I'm missing something. Obviously we've got a button here, mystery button, should we push it? Should we push the button? No. No, we shouldn't push the button. Who knows what we'll do. <laughs> Lots of more power supply stuff down here. We've got the BNC here, which has got a little driver here driving it as well. This is an output connection. And like I said, there's memory there. Some kind of advice here. You can look up these numbers yourself. I'm not really interested. <laughs> you know, it's just the architecture of the scope, what goes into it. I mean, some people are interested. Now, can these covers come off? I think they can. We should have a look inside of one of these channels. Pull one of these covers off. We'll finish looking at the main ball first. A mystery chip just there, ribbon cable there, obviously going down to the control board buttons and stuff like that. More power supply stuff, which is marked as 5 volts analog VCC, it says AVCC, so it's probably analog VCC. This one here as well, 5 volt marking, and here, and the board model number, I suppose we'll talk about that. SDY8.007.496A, and you've got some headers up there, what are they doing? Well, we've got a programming header. On the top right there, mystery J there, J13. You got a J21, SBW, is that TDIO? I wonder what SBW means. So or SBWT. So we've got CK for clock, and DIO. Ooh, got a power on connection. Does that mean you can look up to this and you have a different button? Now that's your port. Hopefully this is a nice, close enough view for you. Maybe there's something in there you need to see. Part numbers, stuff like that. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Gonna try to keep manipulating it and hopefully if there's something that you need to see, you'll be able to see it depending on how the light is on it. And if I can get it in focus for you at the same time. CH3340. That's a USB drive, isn't it? <laughs> or something like it. So that's probably the USB driver there then. Hmm. So that's probably USB there. And that's Ethernet. I'm guessing. We'll power supply stuff down here. Some random circuitry over here with that unpopulated transistor. Let's close look at these things. I'm tempted to take the heatsink off. There's a risk of damaging stuff and it's not mine, so I'm not going to risk that. Maybe Dave will do it to one of his own ones if he gets one. Who knows? And when I say Dave, you should know who I mean. Dave, Dave, the Dave. Just trying to get different lighting on these different devices. See what those are now? I can't. I've taken a bunch of pictures for this as well, which I'll chuck on the UV log forum. But uh, sometimes PNC devices in the video is helpful. Sometimes the pictures don't bring out the detail you need and the video may just have like a frame or two with the numbers you need to see. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes you need one video frame. I think that's enough of close looks for the video. Let's look at the power supply and see what's going on here. What is this thing? It's got two red cables. Three black ones, one brown, a grey, and a blue. Now there are some markings on the PCB down there. Oh, I've forgotten a bit. I was going to take one of those covers off, wasn't I? You didn't tell me. I almost forgot. Let's take one of those covers off. Back to the hammer. Okay, maybe not. Come on. Pop this off. Might have to do this slightly differently. Let's get underneath the thing with this. It's quite tightly on there. There we go, it's working. It's going to slip and take a trace out. <laughs> you think I'm joking? <clears throat> okay. I'm going to take off one of these shields because obviously both channels should be the same and I should do it the right way up for you. 
How's that? There you go. There's a close up of the front end of channel one and channel two. As you expected, they're identical. And obviously, three and four be exactly the same as well. And naturally, these look up. You can just see traces come up here, going to these devices up there. So, try and get some angles so you can maybe see part numbers. Maybe you see some part numbers in there. Obviously, the hardest thing is always getting lighting on these things. Oh, look, it's a 595. Imagine that. It's always a 595, isn't it? Hope this video will be of use to someone who needs to find out a part value or something one day. Obviously the hardest bit is trying to get the lighting right so you can see what I'm doing. Now can you guess what we're going to do next? I'm going to turn the power on, I'm going to boot it up and we're going to see what voltages we get on this power plug to find out what voltage is the power supply is generating. I can see one side of the plug down here, it says ground, ground, power sig and something else. So I've forgotten what that was said now. But yeah, the other side's covered in elastic, I can't see it. So I'm going to have to measure voltages by powering it up. Should be safe like this. Fan's not plugged in, but it's only going to be for a really short period of time. I'm not really worried about that. It should be fine. Now, I could probably attach this to a ground point, like through one of these chassis holes like this or something. I imagine it's the same as the ground on there. Let's double check, shall we? Should be the same, surely. Yep, that means one less connection I've got to hold on, and it should be easier to do. Power button's over here. It should be booting up now. Yep, it's beat. So we're powering up. So blue wire, 15 volts. Brown wire, nothing. The wire there is nothing. There's a gray wire here, minus 10 volts. Red wires, 6.4. Check the other one as well, 6.4 or so. Just double check the grounds just in case there is an isolation or something like that. No, that seems fine. So I think this one here, is a signal for turning thing on and off. So if I come over here, hold that down, it turned off. No, don't know, can't tell. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Didn't seem to change. So I'm not quite sure what the brown one's doing. And with the power off, we've got still at minus 9 volts there. Nothing there. 15 volts there. 6.4 there. So, yeah, nothing there. So I think that's another ground anyway. We can verify that. Well, it's an isolated supply, it's also possible. Let's go to this one right there. Still minus two, ground there. So yeah, still ground. There's 15 there. Minus nine there, yep. So that's definitely ground. So we've got three grounds and a couple of mystery connections. There you go. That's what voltage it uses anyway. Just that one there is curious. So this switch over here, I think that's a boot up switch because I just traced from the pins of that switch over to the power on pads over here, those two unpopulated header pads. I just ran from both of those independently to this switch and they go to that. So I think if you push that switch it turns itself on. It's a power button. <laughs> Interesting. Well, there we go. It's all back together. Seals back on. Looks alright. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly fine. Hold on a minute, something's wrong. Sorry, that's better. Let's see this way up. Anyway, I suppose we should repair it to make sure it still works, eh? Before I give it back. Turn the power on. Drawing four and a half watts. It's booting. Yeah, still works. Well, probably anyway. I didn't do that much, to be honest. Opening up shouldn't really do anything horrendous. It's not like I took the front panel apart or anything. We get a channel any second. There we go. We're back. Have you subscribe over there? Click the bell icon. Patreon support is over there if you want to support the channel, help me to buy test gear, buy stuff from Mailbag, buy things to fix, do videos about. Have you subscribe? Click like. Other videos to watch down below. Catch you later.